everyone, it's Marianne and welcome to My Wasteless Life. For today's video, I'll be talking about 2022's Flight of the Year. Thank you so much for joining me today and if you're new, this is My Wasteless Life where I share with you my houseplant journey as well as some lifestyle content focusing on sustainability, productivity, wellness, and occasional personal and travel vlogs here and there. And right now I'm actually sharing my Hawaii vlogs. So if you haven't seen any of that yet, I'll link the playlist up here and also down in the description. But for today's video, I'm going to be talking about 2022's Flight of the Year. In 2021, I declared Bird of Paradise as Plant of the Year. But for this year, we're going to go with someone with a lot more authority than I am on this matter, which is the National Garden Bureau, and they declared Peperomias as 2022 Plant of the Year. I do think Peperomias are still a bit underrated in the houseplant community. There are, of course, groups of people within the houseplant community that are really into them. But as far as its popularity overall, I do think they still fly kind of under the radar. But Peperomias have hundreds of varieties under its genus, maybe even thousands that we don't even know about. And maybe that's one of the reasons that Peperomias are not as popular because if you're a houseplant collector, the tendency is you want to collect every single variety within each of the plant genus of your choice. With Peperomias, it's kind of hard to do because a lot of Peperomia varieties are still very much unidentified. But the more common ones that you'd see or are well known within the houseplant community is one, the Peperomia ostifolia, also known as the baby rubber tree. And there's also the Peperomia agerea, I think that's how you pronounce it. And it's more commonly known as the Peperomia watermelon, which was really, really popular a couple years back. And I think they're still popular, but they have gotten a little bit of notoriety because they're kind of hard to care of compared to other Peperomia plants, which are more relatively easier care than the Peperomia watermelon. And there's the Peperomia caparata, which is the one that we often see, and also known as the Peperomia frost, the Peperomia incana, and we also have the trailing Peperomias, like the parallel Peperomia, and one that we have seen often in big box stores as well, which used to be on the rarer side, and now is part of the Casa Farms Live Trans Collection, which is the raindrop Peperomia. And the last one that I'm gonna mention, but definitely not the least, is the Peperomia frustrata, or the string of turtles. So this is the Peperomia that I'm I'm going to be mainly talking about in this video but like i said there are many types of peperomias that you could choose from and they look very different from each other from the way they grow the way the foliage looks and the variegation that they may or may not have the other peperomia that i have aside from this one is this peperomia hope they used to have the peperomia obstifolia variegata which i have traded and given away as well as with the peperomia pixie lime and those grow in kind of like more of a bush form also great plants, but peperomias weren't really my thing as a plant genus back then. And this year, if you've seen my previous videos, like my wishlist plants for 2022, I'm taking a chance on plant genuses that I used to stay away from, and one of them is peperomias. But when it comes to the Peperomia frustrata, more commonly known as the string of turtles, this has been always part of my wish list. So when I got this maybe a year or two years ago, probably a year and a half just to be safe, I really wanted to get this plant. And this one used to be on the rarer slash uncommon side and was very hard to get. But this one has popped up in big box stores in recent years, especially last year and even in my most recent trips to the big box stores, I've seen like three of them at a Lowe's. So this one is a lot easier to find. It has become a lot more affordable if you can find them in big box stores. They have also have been common in a lot of nurseries at a relatively reasonable price. I don't think this carry a super high price anymore, but of course that depends on where you live. But where I am in the US, in the Northeast, this has become a lot more accessible and a lot more cheaper compared to two years ago. There are several reasons why peperomias would make great houseplants. As mentioned earlier, it comes in many different varieties, so there's plenty to choose from. So you could always find one that would fit your aesthetic, your plant parenting style, and your level of care that you could provide for the plant. And peperomias also don't grow very large, either as a bushy plant or as a trailing house plant. So if you're already lacking space, but you still kind of want to add plants into your plant collection, definitely look into peperomias. They make great terrarium plants if you want to build a terrarium, or if you have an IKEA greenhouse cabinet or any greenhouse cabinet that you like to put your plants on and you kind of want the plants to stay in that greenhouse glass cabinet for a long time, you don't want it to outgrow it too quickly, then definitely look into getting peperomias. 
And peperomias are often considered succulent or succulent-like plants, kind of like with Hoya, but they actually have very different care compared to succulents because peperomias are tropical plants, not desert plants. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about care for peperomias, mainly focusing on the string of turtles, but a lot of the tips that I'll mention here would apply to most peperomias that you'll find in big box stores or in your nurseries. And if you're not sure if the plant you have is a peperomia, one telling characteristic is if they're blooming, they have this rat tail inflorescence, which is their flower. And compared to, let's say, Hoyas, Peperomias do bloom a lot more easily and a lot more frequently. So you would see this rat tail inflorescence quite easily to help you identify if the plant that you have is a Peperomia. So when it comes to the right requirement of a string of turtles, Peperomias are often lumped with succulents and Hoyas when it comes to plant care. So they think peperomias need a lot of light for it to thrive well. But in reality, peperomias are understory plants in the wild. They can also be epiphytes or lithophytes, meaning they could grow on living and non-living things. But in general, they are understory plants, so they don't really need a lot of light in order to survive or thrive. In fact, they prefer not to have really bright lights. They are not low light plants, but they don't like having bright direct light on them, which would cause the leaves to burn. So the ideal light for a peperomia is medium light to bright indirect light, but I would keep it more on the medium side. And I have my string of turtles in my indoor greenhouse cabinet, which has grow lights, but it's actually on the shelf that does not have a grow light on it. And so far it's doing well, as you can see, it has been trailing really, really long. And this is with me pruning it a lot. And when it comes to watering, for the more succulent types of peperomias, yes, you do have to wait for them to dry out before you water them, kind of like with succulents. But unlike succulents, even though you have to wait for the water to dry out, Peperomias generally do not like staying dry for a very long time, even the most succulent types of peperomias, like this string of turtles. As you can see, the leaves of this have thicker ones, but the also younger ones that you can see are a little bit more flat. So if you have a string of turtles that the leaves are a little bit more flat and not plump, that means you're probably not watering it as frequently or you're letting it dry out too long. But the tricky thing about peperomias when it comes to watering is as mentioned, they don't like getting to be dried out for way too long, but they also don't like getting to be watered way too frequently. So with this one, I generally like to bottom water it and it is in a terracotta pot. And when I've got this, it was in a typical six inch pot that is kind of deep. If you bought any big box store plants, it comes in that regular pot. And I immediately took it off that pot because string of turtles, like a lot of peperomias, have very shallow root system and they don't really need a lot of that soil in order to grow their roots. So immediately I transferred it into this very shallow pot. So you don't want them to be potted in lots of soil thinking that it, they would grow into it. Not really, because it's, like I said, I've mentioned multiple times, the root system, very shallow. And often what I would do is when I do have to water it, is I bottom water it. Sometimes I do top water because I wanna wash the foliage and make sure the dust is not on it. But for the most part, I just bottom water this just to make sure that it is not getting overly saturated when I water them. And when it comes to the frequency of watering, maybe I water this, this size of peperomia and this variety of peperomia, the string of turtles. I water this maybe once, maybe twice a month, really depending on the season. Right now I'm watering this maybe every three to four weeks. I try not to water it as often. And if I'm gonna be honest, I can never really tell when it needs watering. Unlike other peperomias where you can do the taco test, like with a peperomia pexi, or even a peperomia ostifolia, or maybe other peperomias that have a more regular leaf-like structure, you could like bend it. And if it's bendable or you could fold it into like a taco, then that peperomia needs watering. With a string of turtles, obviously that's very hard to do with the way their foliage grows. So with this one, I just kind of like eyeball it, but I'm just making sure that I'm not watering it more than twice a month. But like with any house plants or any tropical house plants, always err to the side of underwatering instead of overwatering. And the way you would know that you're overwatering your peperomias is it would have a very mushy base and it would produce yellowing leaves and of course it would be dropping leaves. And if you are repotting 
any of your peperomias, make sure you're using a well-draining soil mix, the one that has lots of perlite, vermiculite, or any soil amendments that increase drainage in the soil mix. So main takeaway when it comes to soil and repotting, use a fast draining soil mix and keep them in a snug pot like a shallow terracotta pot like I have here. When it comes to temperature, like most tropical houseplants that we have, they like the temperatures to be above 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And when it comes to humidity, they don't really require high levels of humidity, but they do benefit from having relative humidity, which is why I keep mine in my IKEA greenhouse cabinet. One tip that I would give to help your string of turtles trail a bit faster is once they started growing this rat tail inflorescence or their flowers, just take them off because you don't want the plant to be spending its energy on producing these blooms and just let it focus on growing the trails and growing the leaves of your string of turtles. And you can let the blooms grow if you want, it's not gonna hurt your plant, but eventually also this bloom starts to drop pollen all over your plants and you might mistake it for spider mites or pests. So for me to avoid that confusion altogether, I just cut off or pinch off the blooms so that I won't run the risk of trying to guess is it pollen from the blooms or it's actually spider mites. When it comes to propagation, peperomias I think is one of the easiest plants to propagate and I would say it would probably rival a pothos plant when it comes to the ease of propagating one. And with a lot of peperomias, you don't even need a node from your peperomia cutting for it to propagate. Just as long as you have a leaf and a bit of stem in it, it would root up and produce new leaves, So, which is kind of a great thing about peperomias. So when it comes to propagation of the string of turtles, it's quite easy. I actually have some here. I'm it looks nasty, I'm sorry. Um, if you could look past the algae filled water, you can see that the string of turtles have roots already growing in the water. And normally this is not the way that I would propagate my string of turtles. But if you wanna propagate it in water, you definitely can. But the method that I do prefer for a string of turtles is getting a starter pot. Well, this is an upcycled yogurt cup and put some potting soil in it already instead of using any other propagation medium because I don't like disturbing the roots of the string of turtles because I mentioned earlier, they're very delicate and shallow. So once they have grown into the soil, I don't really have to repot it afterwards or transplant it unless it really needs it. More often than not, they don't. So with this one, all I'm really gonna do, which is so easy and so quick, is lay it on top of the soil. And that's pretty much it. And there's really nothing else to it, but by just layering the cuttings that you have on top of it, you don't have to dig or make holes or bury any part of the peperomia cutting or the string of turtle cutting unless you want to. But most part is you just like lay it on top of the soil and it will grow roots like that. You could put it in a prop box if you want, it would help speed up with the root growth like with any house plants. And with this one, this is the old cuttings that came from the test tube. I'm just placing this on top of it. It has a root system already, but I'm not going to like try to plant it. I'm just hoping that the root system will find its way into the soil. So this is why it's a lot better to just propagate them this way than starting with water or using a medium that you know that's not gonna be the permanent medium for the string of turtles and it just makes it a lot easier down the road to just pot it directly in soil and it would grow into soil. I have tried propagating this in Leica, it also works as well, but again, when I needed to transfer it into soil, it was just a hassle and I messed up the root systems. Propagate it directly in soil and you wouldn't have that problem down the road. But yeah, so I think that is full enough and that would grow and I would place that in the prop box and in a future video I'll definitely give you an update on how well the string of turtles is doing. So that is how you propagate a string of turtle or peperomias in general. So that is 2022's plant of the year, the peperomia 
featuring my Peperomia pastrata or the string of turtles. I hope you found those plant care tips and propagation tips helpful. And if you have a Peperomia plant, let me know down in the comments which ones you have or what are your wish list Peperomias. And if you have any other plant care tips when it comes to Peperomia, also share them down in the comments. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new here, please do subscribe. I come up with videos every week. And if you haven't yet, check out this videos up here until my next one. But until then, I see you, I appreciate you. Take care of yourself and each other and have a plentiful day. Bye.